Let's start with a story that's just come out this week of two Harvard students in the US who've hacked Meta's Ray-Ban glasses in order to turn them into makeshift um, uh, facial recognition systems, right? So all you have to do is look at someone and it will pull up information on that person about who they are, where they live, what their phone number is, and a lot more. Take a look. We built glasses that let you identify anybody on the street. The information a tool collects from just a photo of your face is staggering. To use it, you just put the glasses on, then as you walk by people, the glasses will detect when somebody's face is in frame. This photo is used to analyze them, and after a few seconds, their personal information pops up on your phone. Hi, ma'am. Wait, are, are you a Betsy Yes. Oh, okay, I think I, uh, I think I met you through like the Cambridge Community Foundation, right? Yeah, yeah. It's great to meet you. I'm Kane. Now, you might be wondering what that's got to do with artificial intelligence. Like with many applications, it's just making things easier and faster. A lot of this technology was already available, but what they've done is basically um, create a system which essentially takes a photo of someone's face, and then it uses the internet to search for that face and pulls up lots of URLs, and then those URLs are fed into a large language model which passes through all of those different web pages and pulls out all the personal information and connections it can possibly find to bring up a a profile of this person. Um, now, if you think you're safe from this because you don't put your personal information like your phone number and your address online, well, unfortunately, there have been a lot of big uh, leaks and hacks over the years that have caused lots of people's personal information to uh, be put into data databases on the internet, and it does use some of these databases as well. So it just shows how powerful the use of AI can be when, a, when applied to something like this. Meta has told 404 Media that this is a breach of their terms of service, um, but it's just more evidence for people who are calling for more regulation on something like virtual reality systems. The tech itself keeps getting more and more sleek. We've seen uh, two, two weeks ago, Meta announced uh, its project prototype Orion, which are the most sort of discreet, slimline um, virtual reality glasses they've, they've ever developed. So it's it just showing now that um, a lot can be done uh, with just a pair of glasses like the ones I'm, I'm wearing already. It's slightly terrifying. And if some yeah. students can do it, very smart students, yeah. Yeah. imagine what in the wrong hands this could, this yeah. could look like. Uh, okay, so this is not the only scandal that you're yeah. bringing us today. You've got another one involving uh, AI-generated music. Yeah, that's right. Let's take a quick listen to some of it now. Okay, so obviously... Not the best thing I've heard of. We know, <laughs> we know, because we've said it's AI-generated music, we're do talking about AI, we know that it's AI-generated. But if this were just to come up on your Spotify playlist that you're listening to in the background and you've got a similar music theme you're listening to, I don't think many people would notice straight away. And that's exactly what a man called Michael Smith um, is. It was alleged to be exploiting when he pulled off um, a massive scam that US prosecutors are alleging he's uh, pulled off. So he generated tens of thousands of fake accounts to listen to hundreds of thousands of fake songs that he put across lots of different streaming platforms all of which were generated by AI, the music, the titles of the songs, the names of the artists, and he used these to stream, stream these songs uh, billi literally billions of times. And from 2018 to this year, he generated more than 10 million US dollars in uh, royalty revenue from these streaming platforms. So that's what's in the indictment that's been unsealed by US prosecutors. He's faced with facing three charges now, which each carry 20 years in prison, including wire, wire fraud and money laundering. I think what's crazy to me is that this scheme started in 2018, as I said. That's a long time ago in terms of AI, and things have got so much better and more convincing since then. Um, I also just love to point out a few of the names of the artists. Some of them could genuinely be actual band names. Callous Humane, Calm Knuckles, Calvin Mann. Some of them are a bit weirder. Uh, you've got things like Calliope, Erratum, Camel Ed 
edible and a calorie event. I think that one's definitely going to be what my lunch will be like after this, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a major cal calorie event, I think. All right, fake fake listeners, but a lot of real money at yeah. stake there. Yeah. Okay, so you've also brought us a study that shows how AI can be used for good to yeah. tackle conspiracy theories. Yeah, this is quite a positive story. Um, it was a study published in Science, and uh, they've basically the researchers took more than 2,000 self-proclaimed conspiracy theorists. So people in the US who, for instance, believe uh, don't believe the moon landing actually happened, believe the COVID-19 uh, vaccine gave us all microchips, or believe in UFO visitation. So um, amazingly, on average, each of these people, after talking to a chat GPT, which had been told to convince them that they were wrong, about 20% of them, sorry, uh, most of them, on average, uh, reduced their belief in this conspiracy theory by about 20%. Um, so, and that actually persisted several months after the study was finished. So it did seem like, according to this uh, piece of research, that they were able to permanently reduce these people's belief in these conspiracy theories. So that is, is for instance, I think something we can say is quite a positive uh, use of AI, particularly given the rise of conspiracy theories in young people.